As uh, Dr. Butler would say, let's get this show on the road. So uh, uh, thank you all for coming to the uh, hub orientation session on the uh, Texas uh, Venture Labs Accelerator. Uh, and also welcome to IC Squared. And of course, their, uh, their motto is rethinking entrepreneurship. And you may have heard since 1977, uh, this, this place has been the, uh, the, cradle, the, the cradle of incubators. And of course, George Kotzmetsky is deceased, but he was the founder and, and made a, a profound impact uh, on the university and also the uh, Austin economy and, and the state economy as well, and probably nationally, or as Dr. Butler would say, since he's a, a UT professor. Uh, I also want to introduce the esteemed and distinguished uh, professor of management. He's the, he holds right now the chair, the J. Marion Chair for Constructive uh, Capitalism, uh, Dr. Uh, John Sibley Butler. Uh, and uh, he is he's also the uh, former director of the IC Squared. So you've really got you know, all the, the, the high level executives here tonight. And with him will be Ian Bedeau. Uh, who will speak on the uh, uh, Texas Venture Labs. And of course, the other person whom I want to introduce is Dr. Jim Jarrett uh, to, to their right. And I've worked with Jim for probably uh, 35 years and now, uh, 40. And, and he's, in my opinion, the premier uh, researcher in, at the University of Texas as far as uh, social science is concerned. And of course, my name is Jorge Anchondo. And I own a small consulting firm. It's called Arms uh, for Solutions. Uh, make a call to Arms and, Ch and Chondo Research Management and Strategies. So, and I'm also was a, 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 a registered hub, Silvio, but I'm re-registering again, and I'm and I'm running into some problems getting an uh, uh, employee identification number from the IRS, so I know all the problems that hubs uh, go through. What we're doing here today is part of a project that Travis County has funded that's called Enhancing the Participation of Hubs uh, in Travis County's Procurement Program. And this particular uh, session is an add-on suggested by Dr. Butler. And he has a keen interest in making you all wealthy, like himself. He's a wealthy man. Uh, so, uh, 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 so if you you can take it from me, and uh, the last thing I'm going to tell you is uh, uh, before I introduce uh, Miss Lopez, uh, is that this session is going to be videotaped uh, for people that haven't uh, could make it. And so, if I could ask you, and I may interrupt you if you forget to state your name and your company, and uh, and hopefully we'll get it out there. Uh, for you, and it'll be some good PR for Travis County, for UT, and for yourself. So uh, we've got that going. Uh, our first speaker is uh, Sylvia Lopez, whom I met when she was very young, and I was a middle-aged man, so they can tell you <laughs> how long we've known each other. And she is, again, we've got the cream of the crop here, in my opinion, the, uh, the top hub coordinator in the state of Texas. And, and believe me, uh, I know a lot of hub coordinators, and she's also got longevity. So Sylvia is going to explain uh, uh, some stuff about her program, the, the Travis County Hub Program, and then she'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Butler. Did I miss anybody? I have a thumb. You got the thumb. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's a thumbs up. So. All right. Great. Now I know how they. I feel like I'm in concert now with this. Ooh, I won't sing. So uh, tonight, I'll keep my comments brief because I know tonight is about you. It's not about us and our, me. And uh, Before I get started, I just wanted to tell you, um, in your folder is a packet. And the packet has a flyer on how to do business with Travis County. There's also a flyer on an event we are hosting December the 4th, so I hope you can join us. And then another flyer, Bear County has their annual forum in San Antonio. And that's December the 11th. It's a great form, and we added their flyer also. So I just wanted to cover what was in the packet. 
All right, I bring greetings uh, from our Commissioner's Court, from Travis County Commissioner's Court, Judge Eckhard, um, and uh, my boss, Bonnie Floyd. Like uh, Mr. Anchondo said, my name is Sylvia Lopez, and I'm the HUD Program Director for Travis County. I am a 33-year public servant, and uh, 25 of the 33 years has been in the HUB program. So Travis County, we just celebrated our 25-year anniversary in May. Um, the court 25 years ago passed a resolution adopting the HUB program. That's just like the state of Texas, right? We talked yeah, about that. 1994. The, 1994, the state of Texas celebrated their 25-year anniversary for the HUB program. Now, Travis County, well, you know, the, the goal of the HUB program is to be inclusive of my mo minority and women-owned businesses in the county's procurement process. Um, now, Travis County, we do not have a certification process. For those of you that have been through the painful process, I hear it's painful. Uh, we do not, we did not reinvent the wheel and have another certification process. Rather, at the time in 94, the court did decide for the county to recognize the certifications of other entities. So we recognize the state of Texas Hub, we love our acronyms, State of Texas Hub, City of Austin MWBE certification, and then TexDOT uh, DBE certification, and I promise there won't be a test after this of which agencies are cert certified. And then SCIRTA, it's South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency. There are 12 certifications within that directory, and we recognize nine of the 12, okay? Now, in our projects, we do uh, apply HUB goals to our projects in our formal solicitation projects, and we do require that our primes exercise a good faith effort. Uh, we provide that information to the court. Did this prime that submitted a response, did they exercise a good faith effort? That's what we uh, give our court, and we do monitor contract compliance of our primes. Just a little bit of information. Now I'm going to gi just give you a few statistics and then we'll move on. But Travis County in the last 25 years has purchased about $3 billion in goods and services. $335 million uh, of that, or 11.3%, was awarded overall to hub contractors. And I think some of you in the audience, BOA Construction, yes, right there, and uh, Casa Bella Architects, right there, I know you've been awarded, Intec, okay, in the future, hopefully, and are many of you, hopefully, were part of this money, these billion dollar opportunities. Then of the $335 million, $85 million, or 26%, was awarded to HUB subcontractors and subconsultants. So in fiscal year 19, we achieved f about 14.5% utilization with hub businesses, which was about $23 million. So just a few statistics to give you an idea of our commitment. So a few years ago, I attended a workshop that the city of Austin hosted in the evening, and we were able to talk to some big contractors, and we asked them a question of, you know, how, how do you pick hubs? What, what do you do? And there were two things that they said that really stuck with me. They said, first of all, we try to build relationships with the businesses, and we use those that have a good reputation to ours. And, and that meant a lot to me because, I mean, that's just life. But I thought that was very interesting that they didn't say the, the competitive, and they just said the reputation and, and tried to build a relationship with these businesses. So remember that when you're out there. And I just want to leave you with one comment. When, when prime contractors or, or uh, consultants call you to, to bid or propose, respond. When we evaluate the good faith efforts of our prime contractors, I can't not tell you how many times I see that these subs never respond, or the hubs, they don't respond. No response, no response, I mean, over and over. So if I had to leave you with one thought, it would be that, to, to respond, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Butler and Mr. Bideau to continue this great Thank you very presentation. Much. Okay, yes, sir. Here you go. And my colleague, how did you pronounce it? Bideau. What was his first name? I liked that better. Eon. Eon. I liked it. His name is Ian, but we're going to call him Eon from now on. It has more of a... I'm doing the Spanish, though. Yeah. I, 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 well, we need to work on that. We need, we need to work on that. Okay, is this the keyboard here? Oh yeah, you got a clicker right here. Use that. We got a clicker here. Yeah, I want to welcome you to IC Square, which is um, really, really one of the, uh, 
iconic places in Austin, Texas. We think that we changed Austin right here. We met here, uh, well, we had McCombs, I think it was 1976, and, and planned to do a, a city that was different, and we created a technopolis. So Dale started upstairs on the third floor, and also Jim Tressard from National Instruments came through here, and John Mackey from Whole Foods came through here, Evolutionary Technologies. I mean, we did so many companies, we created the Austin Technology Incubator that have done billions and billions of dollars in terms of enhancing the economy. We're here tonight to talk about what, what, what we can do in the tradition of, of Kosmeski. Now, this, is, this is sort of our godfather, if you, you will, who had the idea of changing Austin, founder of Teledyne, came here and wanted to do something different, and asked one thing, how can we create companies and how can we scale companies? So it's good to be here. What we do here is we combine academia, business, technology, unstructured problems, academic stuff, because the program we're going to introduce you uh, to tonight is, is a catalyst in that overall ecosystem. I mean, I was the director, I'm, I'm the faculty director of Texas Adventure Labs. Uh, I, was, I was the director up until, the total director up until uh, a couple of months ago. And it took him two years to get me an assistant, uh, Mr. Badov. <laughs> Badov. And uh, so from the incubator, we do all kind of stuff, right? So I consider this program in the same tradition as, as the Austin Technology Incubator, the University of Texas, what we've done, how we create the future, how we know the business community, how we measure success, how we create wealth, and how we're lightning rod, and what we've done over the years. JBTVL is the John Bromley Texas Venture Labs. And what we do is very, very interesting. Unlike the Texas, the incubator that we have, we would take a company like yours and enhance it, okay? That is, if, if, if you look at what companies do when they come to the university, when I say enhance, that means that the university, if you've been involved with the university, that's a due diligence. So if, if part of your book of business is hub, that's a due diligence. And we like to say that if you're a hub company and you've been through the uh, TVL, the John Bromley Texas Adventure Lab Accelerator, then we really, really think that we were going to enhance what you do. Now, me personally, we have had hub companies before, as long as I was director. But I think this is our first time getting everybody together and saying, look, this is what we do. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask my colleague, we're going to do a dog and pony show here. Uh, he's got his B-I-D-O-T. I thought it was B-I-D-E-A-U-X, which made him a Louisiana guy. <laughs> uh, but you got to have some French somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't and, have the proper Cajun. You don't have, have, a, yeah, have no French Cajun. You, 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 got, you got real French. Yeah. You don't have a D-A-U-X, <laughs> right. Okay. So, so what we do here is this, this is our trip to New York. We ring the bell every year. And, uh, and, and introduce people to wealth creation. Uh, we believe at the Institute and, and the University of Texas that, 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 that we need to learn how to create wealth. And, uh, and John Brown and Texas Adventure Lab certainly allow us to do that. You want to talk about the accelerator? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the previous slide shows uh, the investment competition winners. And so just to give you a little bit of the history of JBTBL, it was born out of Moot Corp which was this big global business started here. competition. Started here, yeah. a couple of MBA students uh, decided that uh, they should have a competition to see who had the best business plan, and they continued to promote that over the years, building it and getting other schools involved, and it turned into this big global uh, event that was known as the Super Bowl of all business plan competitions. So it's evolved a little bit, and now we've kind of scaled it back to just focus on University of Texas uh, graduate students, and every year they compete, actually twice a year, and they have an opportunity to go to NASDAQ and ring the bell. They win cash prizes. It's a lot of fun. Just to kind of show you, we're not all business. We do like to have a little bit of fun as well. Well, let me tell you about that fun. We went to New York last year, and they ran up a bill for $800. Look at bill. I don't even drink. So they were going to put it through the university. I said, no, I think I'll pay for this. <laughs> we, can't, we cannot do that, right? That's right. That's right. Now, now, part of that is, is the accelerator, that is, we're going to talk about the accelerator and how students interact yep. with, with, if you are admitted to our program. Yep. And so uh, we have the accelerator as an extension of what we do to support entrepreneurship. And so we recruit companies outside of UT to bring them in and interact with the graduate students and have them work on uh, some important business problems that they need help with in terms of research, development, you know, strategy, that sort of thing. So. 
<clears throat> this is just an example of some of the companies that have gone through and had success after going through the accelerator. You're probably familiar with some of these. Sears Pharmaceuticals went IPO, so they're a public company now. Ride Scout was sold to uh, Mercedes or was it Mercedes Daimler? My student. Yep, that's right. So Joseph Kopser, who was a, a military guy, ROTC guy, right? He was, and, he was, he was faculty at ROTC, and I was the uh, faculty advisor for ROTC, and he didn't pay tuition, <laughs> but he sold that thing to, uh, to, uh, to Mercedes. Yep. He's, and, then, and then he turned around and ran for, for Congress. Yep. All right. And, and he's back. He's back with us now. And he's, he's bought. We hired him as an entrepreneur resident. Yep. But let me just give an example of this. Let us say that you have a company. Yes. Okay. I do. <laughs> you do have a company, right? And let us say that you come to us and you said, "I really want to be a hub company for, for, for Travis County. Absolutely. I want to do better." So you can have. We can have our graduate students work exclusively mm -hmm. on that program for you. Cool. So that would be market identification. Another company might say, I really need to raise money in the future. They will work exclusively, if you will, on market identification and doing the business plan. Another company might say, I just need an overall strategy. So whatever they ask, whatever they ask, whatever you ask the students to do, then the students and the accelerator, of course, will, will, will do that. And then let me just say this, the, uh, my, my clients on Monday nights, is, is Ph.D. students and B.A. students all over the, the university. And we'll we get to who they are, right? I mean, yeah. we, we, got, we got kids from the law school, we got kids from, from physics, we got kids from engineering, we got MBA students, right? So that's kind of what they're interested in. But let's just talk about some of our uh, yeah. results here. And so essentially those highly talented individuals will help you accelerate your growth. And so to kind of give you an example of the results that we provide, over the years, we've had 208 companies come through our program. 41% of them have gone on to get some significant amount of funding and raise about $735 million. This is through last year. Right now, this number is closer to $800 million because we've had some pretty successful ones recently. And if you know a thing or two about venture capital, you know that's continued to escalate. And so they're giving out larger rounds of funding and things like that. But anyway, just to kind of give you an example of what we do for our companies, now that doesn't fit everybody. You know, a lot of folks come in and they have uh, an idea that might be more of a lifestyle business, right? But they still want to work with the county. We can help you with those type of problems as well. So it doesn't have to be, you know, some moonshot sort of company that's going to be like know, pink a, lotion. A we have. Where, <laughs> like pink lotion. That's right. Yeah. So right. we do have companies that have been around in the ecosystem for decades, and they come to us because they still need some very critical uh, questions answered. And we put the graduate students on that project, and they can develop an action plan, um, you know, create the framework for how they're going to collect the data and, and do the research, and then aggregate all that to create, give you some actionable recommendations for how to move forward. Um, you you so can I, see some of the, mer uh, the metrics here that, that uh, he's talking about. So what we say, we advertise as, as investor ready. Okay, now. What that means in, in raising funds, the question is, we don't, know, we don't care what your book of business is. Okay? We don't care what your book of business is, right? If, if, you want to, if you want to get hub contracts, that's there, and you know, we would consider that kind of raising money in our, in our metric things, right? Uh, we look at early, as, as Ian said, we look at early startup companies. Uh, we have a whole range of industries, right? So this year, for example, we have, we have pink lotion, right? <laughs> And this is a guy that's been around, I know, what, 20 years. Yeah. It's supposed to cure pain uh, or be a muscle. I don't know, I don't know what else it does, right? Yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah, we, <laughs> we have some, quote, high-tech companies. Last year we had a, uh, we had a company that was, uh, it was sort of artificial uh, intelligence. So it runs the whole scheme of things, all right? We have a beauty. This year we have a beauty. Uh, uh, platform for beauty professionals to network and find jobs. Right. Yep. But our, our deal then is to have a, a wide range. And, and let me tell you about the ecosystem. For example, we had this session, our first session, uh, Tuesday night, nice Tuesday night, and I've worked with three companies already. All right, one, one company uh, wanted to be uh, AI, artificial intelligence. I called IBM, and, and uh, they're going to do a whole company for them. You know, so we, 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 we like to connect you to the, uh, really, really to the ecosystem, and that's kind of, uh, uh, what's important. Let's, let's talk some about the companies that we have now yeah, as, so, a, as an example here. 
Uh, yeah, so like Dr. Butler mentioned just now, Pink Science, the, the lotion company that uh, kind of does a million different things. We have uh, an espresso company that's making shelf-stable bottled espresso, so you can do single-serve espresso on the go. Um, Elite Sweets is a protein donut. Viviota does sensor. Um, they're aggregating sensor data to help engineers decrease their cycle times and help car manufacturers be able to you know, put out more models. And more trade is looking for a business model. Yeah, trade I mean, is amazing. Yeah, they really needed sure. help with their revenue model. They didn't know whether they should go subscription or you know pay per lead or how to monetize what they had built. So our students dug in and helped them come up with a few different things to consider in each different one, and then made a recommendation for which one this research was telling them was probably the best path forward. Right. So we think we can solve any problem. And I, I know April, and I remember when she mm -hmm. first started, and I was like, how did you get so organized so quickly? Mm -hmm. That was my thought. So now I didn't know that they were part of this program. Yeah, it's so very right. cool. And that's what we do because, you know, we, you have all kind of questions. And, and, of course, we say the more you know, the better you can fight. Right. Okay? And, and I said, this re related to hope, you know, if, 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 if we can get to a point, and we want to do this next year, let the commissioners know. But the program, we have another program that's mostly hub companies. You, you, you come here and say, how do you become a hub in Travis County? How do you become a hub in Fidel? How do you become a hub for Southwest Airlines? You know, and so we really, really uh, talk traditionally, traditionally about that. Okay? All right, here we go, the big, the big, the big deal. So how do you become uh, a JBTVL accelerator company? Well, it's a competitive process. We have applications that are open on a rolling basis, and so you would submit your application, which is pretty simple. Essentially, you have to have an executive summary, um, you know, a, a pitch deck that kind of summarizes your, um, you know, your, your value proposition. This is all on the and web page. Right? It's all on the web page, yeah. Uh, and then, basically, we look through, see which companies are a good fit. Um, which companies have good market potential, that sort of thing. And then we call out to the majority of them, I'd say maybe about half, a little over half, and um, we interview them in person. So that's an opportunity for you to come in and just talk about the type of projects that you need help with, what sort of challenges you're facing, you know, what your uh, dream is and your vision for the company, and uh, how JBTVL kind of fits into that. So then we admit about 14 companies. So usually it's 14 or so, but like Dr. Butler just mentioned, we'd like to expand that out and have more targeted specific programs for each different type of cohort. But right now, currently, it's 14. Um, the program is a 10-week program. There's some holidays in there, but basically, it's a semester long. On the first day, you come in and you pitch to the students. So if, that's, if you're selected as one of the accelerator companies, then you're going to come in and t uh, pitch to the students and essentially just share with them where you're at and why they should want to work for you. Um, then the companies will be selected and paired with the teams, and they'll go to work to create uh, the framework, you know, and the action plan for how they're going to help solve that problem for you. And remember, this is every semester, so it's rolling. So we we admitted we we admitted a company. One of, it's going to be one of my favorite companies. Um, this guy came out of Microsoft, and he has the technology to uh, trace all the tiles in hotels. He's going to make tiles smart. <laughs> you know that guy. So what, what, what he's doing is this. I said, well, what do you want to do? Now, I started talking to him two years ago. Okay, We met, we met at the coffee shop. Uh, as I said, he was right out of Microsoft. I said, what, what do you want to do? He said, every hotel in America don't know how many tiles they have. They don't know where they are. I said, oh, okay, all right, you know. I don't know where the peanut butter is either. <laughs> okay. But I tell you what, he's gotten contracts. And so if you can imagine the Hilton Hotel, they don't have to worry about tiles anymore. They tell them the towels are smart. They tell them when they need towels, where they are, when do they need to order towels. They shut down their towel facility, and it can be in New Orleans, and the towels are there on FedEx, and you pick them up. Okay? And so it's, it's a smart company. But my point is, I started talking to him two years ago. Remember, this is every semester. You know? So, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and I've always taken, as I mentioned before, I think last semester we had three hub companies, and I've always taken hub companies. So, uh, but this is more a more formalized. Let 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 everybody kind of know what we do. Let's move on so we can have some questions here. I think we've gone through this, right? Yeah. Uh, Except when they meet with the students. Yeah. One thing that I want to call out from here too is that it's not a traditional accelerator where there's a built-in curriculum that you have to show up for every week. 
um, the first day where you present to the students, and then the Venture Expo, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a second. Those are the only two required dates where you're going to be, you know, required to be somewhere at a certain amount, you know, for a certain amount of time. Aside from that, we ask you to spend some time with the company uh, in the first few weeks, just to introduce them to your business model and how you do business, who your customers are, what the industry looks like, you know, work with them to to design the project, right? They're going to have all of their expertise and all of the you know research methodologies and all that, but we still need the founders and you know the, the people that are running the business day to day to collaborate with them. It's a consulting project, right? Um, so that's the the real commitment. And then after that, it's just sort of regular check-ins. The venture expo is at the towards the end of the semester, and that's where you have an opportunity to get in front of the investment community and all of the talent at UT. Um, you know, people that are in the commercialization space and from all over the ecosystem at UT and you do a pitch at the, uh, you know, you do work, the format kind of changes a little bit, but essentially you'll have a chance to pitch in front of an audience and you'll also have a chance to expo on the floor and talk to people and interact with them. So that's another big event um, that provides value for the companies. Yeah, and we also, let me just say this, we, so we've had that class is from six to nine every Monday night. We've had companies come every class period, every class period, okay? Uh, because we had, if we talk about marketing, uh, we had the chief person from, from Michael Dale to come out to talk about how marketing has changed, how it's all in algorithms now, it has little to do with, uh, you know, how we used to do marketing identification, all right. We had, we had Jamie Rose who organized all the wealth in the, in the state of Texas and all the net, angel networks. So we had people to come out, so you're not required, but hey, we have people to just come sit in that class uh, as, uh, as we move through the class. Okay. Yep. And so uh, with that, we'll that we 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 open questions. to to questions. No questions about the football. <laughs> I'm not entertaining. We have. I'm not entertaining any questions about Longhorn football. Uh, I don't think anybody wants to talk about that. Except right? I'm thinking about coming out of the classroom and coach. I'm just we, we're not. I got I got more questions about Longhorn football at the last session than anything. I don't know what to do. Uh, but the uh, only thing I can tell you is that uh, it will improve. So any questions? <laughs> is there a cost? No. Good question. Not, no cost. Now, I, let me just say this. There are no costs now because here's the deal. Like I tell companies, our emphasis is to get our students to learn. Okay? I got to realize in my class, they're mostly PhD students. They are PhDs in chemistry, as I said. They are PhDs in physics. Okay? And there are people who are going to law school. And the students who choose to, to take the class are interested in commercialization, understanding business and enterprise. This is an inter, interdisciplinary class at the University of Texas, and there are very, very few. So if somebody is majoring in a PhD in physics, okay, because at the university what happens is this. You know, at IC Square, we start all of business with science. I mean, Southwest Airlines is a science of flight. So you got a physicist. I had a woman who was getting a PhD in, a, in a electric engineering. She says, hey, this PhD, I'm going to get this in electric engineering, but I'm really interested in creating a company around this also. If you had to pay a consulting firm to do this, woo, you'd be, be, up, be up in the hundreds of thousands, you know, to get the documents that we produce. Who makes the selection of the firms that are going to make it, and is do you have any advice on how to tailor our pitch to position ourselves better? We so essentially as a staff, we we make that determination. Um, like you two? Uh, well, we have uh, another an executive director. We have an executive director, and we have another guy who just who just went to work with a startup, um, but uh, they make the selection, and I kind of look at it and say, okay. Right. And and so, you know, it's and we interview them too. We interview them and we have a scoring system that, you know, tries to sort of take the subjectivity out of it. But right. you know, at the end of the day we still have to choose from fifty amazing companies and trim that down to fourteen. Now to kind of further along that though, like Dr. Butler was referring to this company that uh, is, you know, doing the towels, the smart towels. He's been talking with us for a while. He's gonna be in the next accelerator cohort, but it took him a while to sort of refine and sort of you know shape his his model and his path to funding and all that stuff over time so we've been working with him for a while He's without definitely having, a hub company. 
And, yeah, and, and that's kind of the thing, you know, a lot of the student companies too, they'll come through and uh, they're really early on. They don't really know what they have. They just know they have this problem that they're trying to solve. And so we'll talk with them as much as they want over the, you know, semester, two semesters, whatever, to help them kind of get ready, you know, because we also need to have a good fit company in terms of um, the type of challenges that they're facing that the students can wrap their hands around and really dig into, that we know we're going to be able to help this company, um, that they're going to be, you know, a sustainable company over time. You know, there's a lot of different things that kind of factor into that. Um, but at the end of the day, we don't want to just say, nope, sorry, you're, in, you're, you're not in and goodbye. We want to help all of the companies that we engage with. And once you're part of the family, you know, even through the application process, you're and One of the with things us. we know, which Travis County knows, and one of the things we're working is that we know that there'll be major changes in the whole program in the future. We think there's kind of things that are coming down the pipe, such as uh, gender and race neutral uh, programs. How do you work with companies? So the question is, how do we prepare Texas to be a leader, right, in, uh, in training uh, hub, hub, hub companies to be very, very successful with large companies? Okay. Now, if you, if you take, if you, if you just, just think about an algorithm or how you think about the world, and if you look at how people raise money, we want to say this. We would say, okay, you can have on your resume, I went through the program, I went through the hub program, I went through uh, JB, John Bromley, Texas Adventure Labs, okay? So we've done some due diligence. This is why I keep pushing next year when the big funding is going to come, when the big funding is going to come, where we can have a program where we can say, look, you are prepared to be a hub at Southwest Airlines. And they say, well, why are you prepared? Well, I went through a program at the University of Texas. And furthermore, we hope next year that we will have speakers from those direct companies to come speak to you. How do I get a hub contract from Travis County? So be prepared. You will be speaking. Well, there are time uh, on the uh, website. Are there time frames for applications, et cetera? Yes. Um, and so right now we're currently accepting applications through December 8th for the upcoming cohort for the spring. And then, you know, the cycle just continues. But we'll cut off applications again for the fall semester sometime in probably August. Mid Remember, it's every August. semester. It's every, yeah. every, every, every four months. So, you know, I mean, it. You know, and if you had a kid go to college, it goes fast. Every time you look around, is there, is there a thing? Yes. Are the students a part of a class, and yes. that's how they're selected? Yeah. They apply to the class. They apply to the class, and they, they have to apply. Any in the discipline. What's the bro breakdown now? We've got we probably got 15 MBAs. So yeah, I know we have. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the specific numbers, but we try to keep it about a third business backgrounds, business degrees. A uh, third from the sciences, whether that's engineering, college of natural science, pharm pharmacy, whatever. And then the rest are a combination of law students, right. liberal arts, school of architecture, school of Do information. Do they get class credit for this? Yes. Yeah, they get class credit. So here's the deal. That class could be 80 people. Right. So I got with the chair of management, which, you know, when we set this up. He wants to keep it along, around 50. I think, I think we could do 60, but we try to keep it around, uh, around 50. 50 students. And then what we do is because it, it is, they go into teams, and then we have another class of people who have taken the class before, and they serve as the leaders. And they will have a double class. So what we really try to do is try to get as, as much knowledge and know-how. So we will ask people in this class, would they like to come back as what we call a principal? They are associates. Okay? So while that class is going on upstairs, the 60 people or 50 people downstairs is another class and these are people who are leading the teams that work with your company and remember uh, my job is to give students experiences i love helping you guys but my major goal is to let the students learn i mean if you do extremely well solve a lot of problems and get rich god bless america but my major job is on the students how do i get students to understand what market economies are about you know what capitalism is about how the hell you get to the top of the 1%. The hell with the middle of the 1%. We want the top of the top of the 1%. Okay? Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yes, sir. No, 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 I'm not answering your question. You were here when we, weren't you at the groundbreaking for this building? I happen to be, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Don't look a day older, let's put it that way. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, Philip Burks with Intech. We do uh, geotechnical engineering, the company. 
with regards to someone who's coming in with an idea, that idea can be considered proprietary. So how does a company or an, that idea, how is it protected? Uh, well, let me just say this. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, first of all, we're not, I would consider that a startup. You know, I don't sign NDAs, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because my law, I see too many of them, okay? And, and, I, and, I, and I think that uh, if people come in, even in my MBA class, my undergraduate class, if Dr. Butler have an idea, I don't want to tell the class somebody might steal it. You know what, if it's that good of an idea, you know what I mean, it would be out there already anyway. But, but I think that what we do is that we've had that situation before. Uh, we've had the questions, we have law kids, and we don't give any legal advice to companies. All right. You should have your own lawyers. That's true. All right. So what we do is, uh, you know, you have to trust the students. And uh, for the most part, though, we're not working with the IP. See, we're working with how you do well. So we're not, we're not working with, with, with the fact that uh, uh, you're writing uh, an algorithm or you have a brand new type of intellectual property. We want to take that out the business and accelerate it. So you bring us, we're not going to ask you, how do you make the watch and et cetera. So we're interested in saying, how can, how, how, can, how can you have market identification for this company, right? How can we scale this company? How can we get the numbers for you to do better? How can, how can you put in your book of business that I worked at the University of Texas and I'm a hub program too when you apply, and we want that to be a big, big signaling uh, process to the, to the hub people. That answer your question? It, it does. May I have another question? Yes, sir. You can only choose, or you only choose 14. That's the max. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if you go through the applications and you've got 20 that you want? Will you allow the other six to automatically go to the next semester, or do you have to reapply? You can reapply. You have to reapply. You have to reapply because, you know, it's the university. You have to reapply. Right. Now, that being said, you get a little extra notch, you know, <laughs> and on the, on the little side sheet that says they've been through this before. Right. Um, no, I mean, obviously a big part of, like anything in business, you know, the relationships matter. And so if you build a relationship with us, just naturally you come in and you, you talk about your problems and you already have more credibility. I mean, I think that's just sort of human nature. Right. So, um, and, but you do have to reapply. <laughs> and the other thing is the networking. I mean, if you come, you know, I tell entrepreneurs all the time, you know, we have so many programs at the university. We have so many programs at, at, uh, at, at Texas State. Right? We have programs at... And all, I mean, to me, it's all about the network. I mean, you, you know, if you, you, you can't be an innovator and an entrepreneur by being isolated. And the people that you meet who can help you along the way. So as I said before, the people who were here last Tuesday, they got in the network, and we started calling people, right? And they're not even in the uh, accelerator. But if you think about what we've done, I, I'll just give you an example, a case. We had the Austin Technology Incubator here. We had billions of dollars done, and the requirement was that you have, had to have a student to work with those companies. Those students did more companies than the companies we admitted, right? So, so you never know, you know, how the network will, will have an impact, because I think the network is everything. Any other questions? Thank you. Any questions about UT football? I'll take them now. <laughs> <laughs> well, this what happened. That's, too, that's a long conversation. <laughs> Isn't that long? Before you, before you finish, uh, before you start, though, uh, thank you all for, for showing up. Uh, tell your friends that we're going to video, that we have videotape this. Uh, let's see, what is your firm? I, um, my name is Karina, and my firm is Brand Besties. We're your brand's best friend, guys, nationwide event staffing. All right, great. And you, sir, you asked the More construction management group. Good. Anybody else have a question that did not identify themselves? All right. Well, thank you all very much. Oh, we got one more. Okay. I'm Ellen Beeman with Casa Bella Architects. Casa Bella. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you kindly. Now, he, he, I have to tell you that he was the first uh, African American. Well, I'm black. To, yeah. African American. To, <laughs> yeah, to integrate the SEC in 1965. I'll basketball. Basketball, yeah. but I'm talking about LSU. My, but, my and he's from LSU, is so you know where LSU is right my, now. My, yeah, that's what happened. So we, we, came, we beat over and went on and beat Florida. I mean, Georgia. Came back with the big head. I get my alma mater over here. I'm on the, I'm on the fat board at LSU. We have a good game with LSU, and uh, we just didn't beat them. And then we just went straight out here. I think LSU just took our soul. 
<laughs> One quick thing, um, you know, if you guys have any questions, yeah, have I'm gonna, any questions, I have my cards here. Come ask me right now after the, the session. And Oh, go ahead. Would it be hard, since relationships are important, <clears> and <throat> for everyone to say who they are in the business, and then we can... Oh, yes, yeah, you guys can, can do that. I'm going to run upstairs okay. and, and, and do some stuff. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, I'd love to, uh, well, I love that idea. If you don't mind, if you guys uh, got a few minutes, uh, I'd love to hear from all oh, of you, yeah. you know, what your business is and your name and that sort of thing. I want to know how much money you're making. I don't want to make money. <laughs> I know Dr. Butler's got to run, they so let's thank him again for coming out and spending some time. Um, so we'll start over here. So what, uh, what's your company and, and your name? What is the, what's the name of our company, Greg? <laughs> My Opto is My the Opto. name of the company. What does that stand okay. for? Uh, it's, it's, we started to be uh, video optimizations, but okay, as, as time changed, it's really digital collaboration optimizations. We're a cloud-based software company okay. that help customers uh, reduce issues, improve quality, and also help them plan okay. and look at collaboration within the enterprise. Excellent. And, well, we got your... Besties, uh, yeah, brand, besties. brand besties. Okay, I like yes. it. Uh, and three folks. Uh, Ruben and Elia from Rule and Technical Services. Okay. We do residential, commercial, and industrial, and we've done some work for UT. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. You're welcome. I'm Miss Vanderson. Um, the company is JMI Services. It's commercial plumbing. We've done work with Texas Military. Um, we're in a mentorship with QA Services. And we also are in a contract with Travis County. Okay. Excellent. And uh, we'll go up here, I guess. Yeah. My name is uh, Omar Tonkins. This is my son, Jordan Tonkins, who is with uh, JMT's LLC. We do uh, screen printing, embroidery. We've also branched out to doing uh, promotional products. We've worked okay. with HEB, uh, um, Round Rock School District, stuff like that. Churches. So if we have uh, a big event and we need some little tchotchkes and stuff, to get printed up, it's up to you guys, right? Yeah, All right, sure, All right. cool. That, well, let's talk, because I got some other events coming up. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and then, yeah, we'll go down the line here. So, again, uh, I'm Ellen Beeman with Casabella Architects. Um, if you've been around for a while, you know my dad, Jaime. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and this is um, our head interior designer, Sarah Dunaway. Sarah Dunaway Marsman, and she actually, tell them about the renovations that you did on this building. Uh, on this building. Yeah, oh, we've nice. done just a few like office renovations and like the restrooms here, mm -hmm. and then we've done a ton of work over at the town hall. And um, goodness, I got a frog in my throat. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've done a lot of work for UT, and uh, Mr. Beeman has been with UT since like 1994. So yeah, we've I'm Lisa Kang, Lisa Kang Interiors. I have a residential design business for 20 years. I'm getting my fit in the door with commercial. I got awarded my first project with UT, uh, nice. Jester Dorm Remodel, and I'm under a mentorship program with J.E. Dunn. Great. Excellent. I'm Noelle Kimmel. I'm with Abdela Deem and Associates. We're an IT consulting firm. Okay. Provide primarily staffing services to state IT agencies. Perfect. I'm Jim White again, Boa Construction Management Company. We do vertical construction. Uh, we have the privilege of working uh, with Travis County on several projects, and we are venturing into education in the construction industry because there are a lack of skilled workforce in that area, and so we are in the process of developing that heavy okay. equipment operators. Okay. So certifications as well, or just general education? Okay. Nice. Thanks. I'm Amy Rostner. I'm with uh, HelpWorks Ergonomics, um, co-owner. Um, we basically, we're physical and occupational therapists. I'm a physical therapist. Uh, partner in business is an occupational therapist. And basically, in a nutshell, we teach smart people how to sit in their chairs. Um, a lot of people think that they're like, oh, you guys, you're in ergonomics. Uh, and so they think that we sell furniture. Um, but we don't. We, we actually um, really have a passion for helping people 
stay comfortable, productive, and healthy while they work. Um, and it actually continue to love what they do because they are healthy and happy. Um, so we work with companies all the way from 10,000 to, to individuals that work at home. Um, we have recently been, or this year we've been awarded our first uh, contract with the city. We're, we're going to start a five-year project with Austin awesome. Energy. So we're, cool. we're pretty excited about, about that. Um, yeah, that's so fantastic. That's us. Excellent. All right. My name is Lav Chintapalli, and uh, my company is called Pathway Power. Okay. I do um, leadership coaching and consulting. Um, and um, the, the consulting side is especially we build programs to solve the need versus off the shelf. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason I'm here is because I have an offshoot that I've an initiative called Women Leaders Rising that helps primarily women develop leadership programs and also women who've had disempowering experiences to gotcha. try to step up and, nice. and step out. So. Excellent. All right. Welcome. My name is Philip Burks. I'm uh, working with a geotechnical engineering company, and that is soil testing as well as construction material testing here in Austin and in San Antonio. And if I may say, have any of you worked with uh, Sylvia at, at all, or you got your hub through a different agency? I've talked to her, talk with Sylvia. Sylvia. <laughs> all right. I, I, she is, without a doubt, as Dr. Bubba said, and also the gentleman there, uh, one of the best compassionate and serious uh, individual professionals to help you with your program or help you try and get contracts under that HUB program. So you're in good company and good hands with Sylvia. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, I'm Angela Hood. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called This Way Global. Uh, we were founded out of R&D out of the University of Cambridge in England, and we decided to set up our headquarters here in Austin, so we love being here. Uh, we provide unbiased matching technology inside existing technologies inside enterprise. So this is for people to jobs. So if you could imagine, there's a lot of bias that is contributing to people not getting jobs and to employers not being able to find the right candidates for jobs. And we remove that bias, then make the match, and increase hiring by about 38%. Wow. Of course. Nice. But you focus on engineering resources as well? Or so we studied uh, 48,000 job types in order to get our, um, our initial launch, and we proudly have only been stumped by two jobs in the last year and a half. So um, that we try to, it doesn't matter if it's an entry level position or a very complicated position. Uh, well, you do use artificial intelligence, so I know you hear a lot of maybe negative things, but uh, you can use technology in a very positive way. Does Malcolm Gladwell talk about you guys in his newest book, How to Talk to Strangers? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> it sounds like he does talk about technology like that. Right. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's several companies that have taken different approaches to this to solving this problem. I'm a female engineer, and I understand what that part of it's like. Uh, Justin's our COO. He's a veteran. Uh, we have people out of the LGBTQ community who contribute uh, on a daily basis and explain to us, like, what is that experience like? So it's, it's not really just gender or just ethnicity. It's about really leveling the playing field for everyone that wants to work. Excellent. All right, I think we got everybody. Cool. Well, um, I'll just wrap up by saying, you know, obviously <coughs> we really appreciate IC Squared, James, and uh, uh, um, I, you have to remind me, I'm so sorry, Amat? Jorge. 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 Jorge, yes. <laughs> I know that there's, there's an A in there, too, though, right? AR, a, 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 arms, right? You, you're just getting back at me. That's right. Yes, <laughs> he's on to me. Um, no, but we appreciate them, and uh, obviously we appreciate all of you for coming and joining us. Uh, we'd love to talk to you more about your business, how JBTVL can help, and you know, just generally, um, you know, how you can get a little bit more connected. So, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.